it wouldn't force in properly. He was pushing against this door and it just wouldn't latch. And so he goes to do the, the bottom latch and he manages to press it in enough so that he actually could get the bottom latch done. And then he tries to go do the top latch again and the bottom latch popped out and the top latch went in. So he could get either the bottom latch or the top latch closed, but not both. You cannot leave Hubble up there with open doors. That would have been a disaster because th there's a possibility that you might have leaks, a possibility you would lose your thermal control for these highly sensitive optical instruments. We have to get these doors closed. And then Story and Jeff came up with the idea that if we take a ratcheting strap the kind of thing that they use to hold furniture down in big removal vans, we could use that to apply the pressure on Story's bottom part of the door. We could do that and then Story could work the top latch with the other hand. The problem was that you could exert about 2,000 pounds of force with these things, enough to crush Hubble. And, and we're improvising on the world's most expensive telescope. And so the guys on the ground started debating about whether what story was going to do would be safe or not. And Milt Heflin suddenly realised, OK, we're going to start talking about this and we're going to get behind. So he made the decision to say, we're going to go ahead and do what story wants us to do. And, and overrided the Hubble scientists. <laughs> and, and, you know, I think they had visions of, you know, Hubble collapsing, you know, like a cheap beer can. Um. But the repair, the, the, the quick fix works and Story manages to latch the door. And then they prepare Hubble's cargo bay for the next EVA and then went back inside. Then almost immediately, EVA Team 2, Kathy Thornton and Tom Akers suit up for the second EVA. And so they get all set up out they go and their job is to replace Hubble's solar panels. We want to upgrade them because we can take up uh, better but heavier solar panels. The STS-31 couldn't because it had to take the Hubble telescope up with it. So uh, our first job on that EVA was to retract and remove the old solar panels. So we start to do the, the first set and they, the solar panel furled and then we took it off and stowed it. The second solar panel, the one that we had trouble with on STS-31, it only came in part of the way. It did not come all the way in. So we decided that we would just take it off and throw it away off into space. And, and once again, we're improvising. If the release goes wrong, the, tel the uh, solar panel could smash into the telescope or Endeavour. So, Kathy straps her feet onto the robot manipulator arm and then grabs hold of these handles that we had put on the edge of the solar panel, right in the middle of the solar panel. And then, as Tom released the lock pins, Claude pushed Kathy over on the robot manipulator arm out over the side of Endeavour. And so with this big, big solar panel in her hands, uh, she get, got ready to just release the thing. Now she was having problems with her communication system. All her comms had to be relayed from the ground through Tom to Kathy. So uh, Tom gives her the go. He says, you've got to go for a release. And so when Kathy got the call, all she did was just let go. And Claude pulled her back on the arm and this big solar panel was just sitting there right where she left it, right, in, right beside Endeavour. And then the pilot, Ken Bowersox, fires Endeavour's thrusters and moves us away from, from the solar panel. And when that happened, the plume from the orbiter hit the solar panel and the solar array started flapping as it moved away and Jeff said that to him it looked like the wings of a giant you know prehistoric bird and Kathy had the 
best view in, in, in the world on that. But the next two EVAs are the most critical. The team will install two huge devices to correct Hubble's vision. The first, Jeff and Story would install a super camera that can see to the ends of the universe called WIFPIC would replace our old camera uh, so that we would have enough space to put in CoStar above it. So WIFPIC went in like this and CoStar went in like this. WIFPIC, you know, we have to be very, very careful. Jeff was the guy who was hands-on that actually put it into Hubble and um, Story would guide him in as this thing goes inside. And, you know, this is a very, very sensitive optical instrument. Holding on to it, Jeff bangs the instruments. He could misalign the optics, which would be very, very bad because that would make the whole mission pointless. We screwed up everything, but it just went right in there, just as smooth as it could be and, and just perfect. And so then we told the guys, OK, you're, you're just going to have to wait for a few moments because we check all this stuff out we ran what we call a liveness check and the first signs are good the electronics are responding the next EVA will install the most important optical device CoStar so uh, Kathy and Tom went out and slid this thing in perfectly without any problems whatsoever we run a second liveness check um, and it, it's just working and we think oh my god this can't be happening nothing's going wrong this can't be Hubble the astronauts complete the most complex repair mission in history and I can say unequivocally that if it were not for the human space program, Hubble would be a piece of orbiting space junk. It's probably hard to imagine now how different the space agency would probably be at this time if we hadn't been able to fix Hubble. Uh, STS-61 was the most complex space shuttle mission ever attempted. And... Hubble showed us that we can do a number of spacewalks during a mission. We can do more than one at a time. We can do them back to back. We can have, do them with two different crews. And Hubble was probably the star in a giving us that extra confidence to go assemble a space station. So yeah, bring it on. Because now we have an international cooperation and we are getting ready to build the International Space Station the most ambitious construction project ever attempted. But for now, Hubble, thanks to STS-61, is free to gaze deep into the universe in perfect focus.